again. Thanks for watching. This is another quick tips video from Go Engineer. My name is Joseph Katrona. Today's topic is an introduction to dispatch in Enterprise PDM. I want to take this opportunity to show you our blog here at Go Engineer. There's a lot of great content on here, and dispatch reminds me that recently there was some content uh, here that's relevant for this video. At goengineer.com slash blog, you can always find a great list of uh, info uh, that's pertinent to the industry and also uh, SolidWorks and the various other partners that, that we have. Recently, I wrote a blog article that included some information about, about Dispatch, so I think this is a great summary that I wanted to revisit. It's an underutilized tool that includes the option to do things like uh, create right-click menu options, variable modifications to documents, very similar to, to programming in the sense that it gives you the ability to automate certain things. So let's take a look at Dispatch. So I've started with a vault that does not currently have Dispatch so that we can show how to get it added in. It is an add-in, and we can notice that under this vault, all I have is the SolidWorks task add-in. That's the one that makes PDFs and DWGs. So I want to import the dispatch add-in. So I'll choose the vault, right click, and do an import. From there I'll want to browse to the installation directory which is program files, SolidWorks Enterprise PDM, default data, and down at the bottom I should find, if I select to add-ins, I should see the dispatch add-in. This dialog box lets me know that the import has completed and now I see dispatch. So let's get started by opening it up and choosing administrate actions. Either open or administrate. We'll take the long way home first. Open and then administrate actions. So I'll start here by saying add and then give this a name of test dispatch and maybe a quick description of ASDF four ways to activate a dispatch. Either it can be part of the right-click menu, I can trigger it during a state change in the workflow, during checkout or check-in, or during the add operation, when a file is being added to the vault, uh, that, that paste or save as for the first time. And if I hit the add funct function on commands down here, we'll see the different options you have. So cancel a, P, uh, cancel a command, check in, check out, we can start loops, we can jump, rename files, etc. So let me show you a very basic example. Okay, great. So there we have it. Very quickly, we were able to write basically a dispatch action that's going to allow me to select a bunch of files, right-click, choose this option from the right-click menu, write new description to many files, and what it's going to do as it drops into its code is it's going to pop up an edit box that says what? Please enter a new description. It stores that in a variable and then it starts a loop. So a for all, end all. So for all documents selected, end all documents. And what's in between that loop is check out the file, set the card variables, oh, and I better add to check the file back in. Updated description. So very quickly you can see that we can write these type of actions and automation with dispatch. So let's see this dispatch action in action. I'll grab three files, right click, there's my new option, test, write new description. I get a pop-up box, please enter new description. I'll say this is my testing description and go. And just like that, behind the scenes, for each of these files that was selected, I can see on the data card that there's my quick description. So here we have an example of a much more elaborate dispatch action. This one is meant to rename SOLIDWORKS files with the serial number from the data card. It starts off with uh, a for all loop, of course, and then some jumps. And essentially a jump is a way to skip over some code if certain conditions are not met, or if this, if that, it will jump over the code. For example, in this one, if the file extension is not a SOLIDWORKS file, then it's going to jump over the code or jump to an error. Also, if there is not a serial number in the data card, then it will skip the rename operation. Another renaming example that's really nice is the ability to pull off the rev from the end of a file name, place that in the data card, and then rename the file without that 
rev being at the end of the file name. Very handy there. Another thing I'll point out is in the variables for these dispatch actions. So for this one, we've got new file name, file extension, rev, length of file name. So as you can see, I have to find the rev if I need to strip it. So in order to do that, I have to find the extension. And then I have to have a new file name and a position of the rev. So you can see very quickly that substrings and, and the ability to do some string functions really give us a lot of strength and flexibility in the dispatch. One more example I'll give you is just an immediate check-in and check-out. Whenever a file gets added to the vault, this dispatch solves the problem. Sometimes with new users or casual users, we get those files that are left in the private mode for a long time. They've been moved into the vault, pasted into the vault, but never checked in. So dispatch can solve a lot of times problems like that. This, this is a very basic dispatch. For any file in this certain folder, it's just going to immediately check it in and check it out behind the scenes. The user doesn't know it, but it gets it out of that private mode. So as you can see, it's very easy to get down in the weeds and the nuts and bolts and spend some significant time here. But this is a powerful tool, and I wanted to have an intro video out there on our YouTube channel uh, that we can point people to, just to give you an idea of what dispatch can do. Of course, our professional services team is available to work on these kind of dispatches with you or for your company. Uh, so feel free to give us a call if you've got more questions about this. Also, feel free to leave us a comment uh, if this has been helpful. We like to hear that. And also, if you, there's certain videos you'd like to see in the future, we'd love to hear that as well. Thanks for watching.